We are going to be looking at the lives of three women who brought the gospel to China. Today, we're looking at the first woman, Sally Holmes. Welcome back to the Church History Podcast. I'm your host, Laura Lee Siemens. Today's episode is brought to you by Alexander Henry Coffee. If you use the code Church History, all lowercase and no spaces, you can receive a 20% discount. If you want great coffee, check it out. My husband roasts the coffee, and let me tell you, our home smells amazing. I'm drinking the coffee right now as I record this, and it tastes so smooth. So check out the link in the show notes. We are starting a four-part series on the lives of four women who were all connected, three serving in China together, and one working to promote mission work in America. Today, the first episode in this series is telling the story of Sally Holmes. Sally Holmes was born in 1836. To give you some context for the world she was born into, let's take a little look at the world in 1836. It was the year that Spain officially recognized Mexico as an independent country. The year started with the death of Betsy Ross. She was the woman who designed the first American flag. In February, Davy Crockett arrived in Texas, and the Battle of the Alamo started. In June, Arkansas became the 25th state admitted into the United States of America. And a month later, the very first U.S. patent, patent number one, was issued. John Ruggles received the patent for railroad steam locomotive tires. On July 24th, 1836, Sally was born in Loudoun County, Virginia. She would eventually be used by God to bring the gospel to China. Just four years earlier, Hudson Taylor was born. We did an episode on Hudson Taylor and his work in China, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Sally was born just nine years before the Foreign Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention was formed. Sally's father was a dentist, and her mother was a teacher. Her extended family was in the jewelry business, and was in that business for many generations. Sally grew up not in need of anything. She was also raised to love God and was a strong Baptist. She had a friend named Landrum. Landrum was not a Baptist. He was a Methodist. At this time, the Baptists and the Methodists were the two largest denominations in America. The main difference was the idea of baptism by immersion, as someone old enough to make the choice for themselves. Sally and Landrum both went to school in Baltimore, to further their education. In Baltimore, Landum was mentored by a man named Richard Fuller, one of the greatest Baptist preachers in America. Under his mentorship, Landrum left the Methodist Church and became a Baptist. Sally became friends with a woman named Annie Armstrong. We're going to do an episode on her in a few weeks. Annie stayed friends with Sally all the way until her death. Sally and Landrum moved from a deep friendship to love, and they were married just three weeks before setting sail for China. Their boat left New York headed for China, and they would spend 22 weeks at sea. When we talk about the great missionary of the past, we often picture them doing all they did through our modern eyes. But remember, they did everything without the modern technology that we have today. They did more than we're doing today, with a lot less. In 1859, Sally and Landrum arrived in China. They began to learn the language and settle into life in China. Landrum was extremely smart, and he learned to speak Mandarin at an almost supernatural speed. He became completely fluent in the language and was asked by the U.S. Council to work as a translator when they came to China. He was working as a translator for the American government 
after only studying Mandarin for one year. There was one huge thing that impacted Sally and Landrum. Sally and Landrum arrived in China during the Taiping Rebellion. This rebellion lasted from 1850 to 1864. This was the bloodiest civil war in world history. Over 20 million people were killed during this rebellion. This was a very difficult civil war for Christian missionaries. The conflict was between the Qing dynasty and the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom. The uprising was started by a man named Hong Ju Wan, who claimed to be the brother of Jesus Christ. He claimed he wanted to claim the land for his version of Christianity. China was an emperor-worshipping society, and Hong Ji Wan's version of Christianity was a hybrid of Protestant and emperor-worshipping traditions. Hong met a missionary in 1836 and was interested in his message. The missionary, Edwin Stevens, gave him a copy of the book, God's Words to Admonish the Age. Hong read the book and did one of the most dangerous things a person can do. He took the truth of Christianity and then added his own interpretation and his own personal visions. He believed the visions he had earlier in his life were explained by the story he read in this book. He believed that Jesus had come to him in his visions to tell him that he was the brother of Jesus, and therefore he also was the Son of God. He was born with a purpose of ridding the world of devil worship, and by devil worship he meant emperor worship. So imagine you are living as a Chinese man or woman in the middle of this civil war, and you see a white man who struggles with your language telling you about a man named Jesus Christ and how God wants to forgive you of your sins and how you can be a child of God. You would obviously connect this message to the civil war. While Sally and Landrum were dealing with the civil war on the mission field, they heard news that a civil war had also started back home. The American Civil War started in 1861. Because of this, much of their support was either ended or lowered significantly. During this time, Landrum and Sally had been working in an area where there was a mission set up. They were serving there, but Landrum felt God was calling him to start a brand new mission. During a civil war, he began traveling to new cities, looking for a city that would be open to a mission. He found a city that was opened and allowed them to come. So, Sally and Landrum moved and started a new mission. Things were really hard for Sally and Landrum, but God was using them. Landrum's amazing ability to learn the Mandarin language was coupled with his preaching ability, and it didn't take long before he had people coming to hear the message. Then, Sally found out she was pregnant, and the couple was so excited at the birth of their little daughter, Annie. They had been in China for only one year. Landrum had mastered the language, they'd started a brand new mission, and they had a baby girl. And of course, they had named their daughter after Sally's lifelong friend, who was still back home and who she missed dearly, Annie. But there were very hard times happening. The civil war back home was causing a lot of pain. Sally's brothers lived up north and was part of the Maryland Home Guard, while the rest of the family lived in Virginia and were part of the South. Sometimes we forget that when we look back during the time of the Civil War, that there were good people who happened to be living in the South and living in the North. And not everyone who fought was fighting for or against slavery. People in both the South and the North were forced to be part of the military, and families on opposite sides had to fight each other. This caused a lot of pain. Sally and China worried for her family. And then the money stopped coming altogether. There was no support because the mission had no money. The support had ended with the church back home, wrapped up in a civil war. 
Landrum's brother came to China and started an import-export business, and Landrum began to work for him. That helped a little bit, bringing in some money since their support was gone. But then, little Annie got sick. She was only a few months old, and she died after just a few weeks of sickness. And that is when Sally and Landrum learned that it was against the law for a foreigner to be buried in China. And because of that law, Sally and Landrum had to travel to a nearby island. Today that island is called Lighthouse Island. They had to dig a grave for Annie and then leave her there on that island. Both Sally and Landrum were left shocked and heartbroken at the sudden turn of events. Even though Annie had been born in China, she was still considered a foreigner, and so she was not allowed to be buried in China. A few days later, a missionary who lived just a few miles away died. Landrum left to help his widow as she prepared for the long boat ride home. Landrum struggled with the idea of this woman traveling alone across the ocean. One of the things that hit Landrum was the thought, what happens if I die? My wife would be left here all alone. She would have to travel all the way back to America by herself. He began to picture her alone on the ship, devastated and trying to navigate her way home. Landum sat Sally down, and he told her about his fears. In a letter home, Sally explained the conversation this way. If I thought I should die and leave you alone, he said, and leave you to go all that long way back by yourself, I should find it hard to say, Thy will be done. His brave wife's quick and encouraging reply was, Landrum, I would not go back. I would stay here and work. His face shone with deep joy. If you feel that way, he said, I shall have no further anxiety about the matter. What Sally was saying was that she was not in China because Landrum had been called to be a missionary and she happened to be his wife. She was in China because God had called her there to be a missionary. This might not seem like a big deal, but at that time, people didn't believe that God called women to do missionary work. They believed God called men, and the women who agreed to be their wife had a biblical responsibility to be on the mission field. But Sally did not see it that way. In our next episode, you will see how her belief that God would call a woman to do mission work changed the way the work in China was done, as well as how the Foreign Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention treated women called to the mission field. It had been three weeks since little Annie died, and while they are trying to sort out their feelings about this turn of events, news reached them that the Taiping rebels were headed towards a village where Sally and Landrum lived. Landrum and two other missionary men decided to ride out to meet the rebels and talk to them. The rebels had been arriving in towns and killing everyone and burning the city down. The people were terrified as the news spread that the rebels were heading toward their town. There seemed to be no way to escape. Landrum and another missionary named Parker were hoping to make a deal with the rebels or tell them that the people were not taking sides and would not hurt the rebels. They would also express to the rebels that they did not believe it was appropriate to worship the emperor. Landrum and Parker were hopeful they would be able to save the village. Sally and Parker's wife sat home waiting for their husbands to return. The village all waited in terror. Eight days passed, and the rebels never came. And they soon realized the rebels had passed by the village without bothering them. But Landrum and the other men did not return. After a while, Landrum's brother, Matthew Holmes, left to find him. Matthew met a man who told him what he had seen. Landon and the other missionaries welcomed the rebels in peace. However, the rebels attacked them right away. They didn't kill them quickly. They stabbed them over and over and over, and then lit them on fire. The men from the village heard where they had left the bodies. They went to retrieve the bodies that had been stabbed so many times and then burned. It was impossible to even know which one of the bodies was Landrum, which body belonged to the other men. Because the men were not Chinese, 
they were not allowed to be buried, so the wives had to take their husband's body to the same island where Annie had been buried just three weeks earlier. Now, Sally had to decide what she was going to do. Parker's wife was returning to America. But would Sally stay here alone in China, in the middle of a civil war, without her husband, who was not only her protector, but also her translator, in a brand new mission started only a few months before? She was also facing a lack of support from the Foreign Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention, which told her single women were not allowed to be missionaries, and she must return home. Her family was also trying to convince her to come home. And then she realized she was pregnant. One month ago, she was a wife and the mother of a little girl, supported by a mission board. Now she was a pregnant single mother who was not supported by a mission board. Her entire world had been turned upside down. But she stayed true to what she told her husband. She was in China because God called her to be a missionary in China. She would not leave. She gave birth to a little boy and named him Landrum. She was now a single mom in China. God was not leaving her alone. He was sending two women who would work with her and impact China. And in our next episode, we're going to hear about one of those women, Martha Foster Crawford. Before we leave this episode, I want to talk about Sally's grief. She wrote openly about her grief in Letters Home. She wrote about being sad all the time. The hurt and the pain never left her. She only eventually learned how to live with the pain. She wrote about desperately wanting to die. She wanted to be in heaven and felt guilty because it was not Jesus she was longing to see, but her husband and her daughter. She was honest about her grief, and it was that honesty that makes me see her as a true hero of the faith. Sally writes that she knew God is good, and that God would care for her, even when she doesn't feel it. She knew, deep in her heart, that God was real. Her faith, her courage, her love of God was not based on her feelings, but on her knowledge. She didn't wait for her pain to be gone. She worshipped God and served God through her pain. That is pretty incredible. She never stopped loving Landrum. She never married again. And she raised her son Landrum, and she adopted two little Chinese boys. So she became a single mother of three little boys. Her life was about serving others and serving God. Don't miss next week's episode where we continue the story of Sally and her new partner and missionary, Martha Foster Crawford. 